we are officially recording. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Yeah. So basically what the, the plan was for today is that we were going to first start, just to give you a rundown, we're going to start with our wins for the week, like what it is that we felt we did well. And it doesn't matter how many things you think you could have done better. Let's just focus on the first part. We're going to talk about what we did well. And then after that, we're the most of what we wanted to come together today would be to talk about obstacles, obstacles to whether for some it was getting enough protein, for others it was just planning and executing a, a meal plan. Uh, so things coming up and you know having to navigate that. So we'll talk about obstacles. Uh, and then uh, did everyone do that's in here? Did everyone do the character survey? Did you do it, Carlos? I did not do it. Oh, okay, that's okay. Um, so we'll just use talk about how character strengths can be used to can be leveraged when it comes to dealing with obstacles or when it comes to uh, when your motivation starts to wane when you get mid mid uh, challenge that type of thing. So character strengths are a really important part. And then we'll just wrap it up with talking a little bit more about um, how some of those challenges especially with meal meal planning, how we can kind of um, troubleshoot some of those so that going into this coming week that we'll have more um, meal planning wins and as well as, you know, whatever else comes up. So that's, it's basically just a check-in to see uh, where we're, where we're getting stuck or where we're feeling less than, than ready for what we're doing. So how's that sound? Sounds good. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and start with wins. Um, and it can be anything, right? And and every one of us had one. We had at least one win when it came to what we're trying to do. So what do we feel good about having finished this first real week in the challenge? Um, I'm happy to go. I feel good about like since we met last weekend, we didn't have time as a family to do our shopping and meal planning necessarily for this last week. But um, I just kind of, um, we, we, Vivian and I sort of threw together some meals that we felt like were not fast food at least. And um, we both also um, planned to, once we finish the kitchen sink, we're going to make our menu for the week and then do some meal planning. Uh, I also am one that doesn't always eat breakfast. And I know that having some like protein and fuel in the morning is important. So um, I tried to focus on that this week. Vivi, did you have any wins that you wanted to share? Yeah, so I've started um, incorporating some of my old PT exercises into just like when I was watching your show or something so mm -hmm. that I can kind of get back on track with that since I've been slacking a bit. And then um, I've been starting my day off with um, like more protein-filled foods so that I can just be more prepared for the day. So I think that's two wins that were most prominent. I recently got like at Costco, you can get the pre hard boiled eggs. Yeah. I know it's not hard to boil an egg, but there are these packs, two packs of hard boiled eggs and everyone seems to really like being able to grab those on the way out the door. So that's helpful for, uh, for our family of five. And, and I don't know if you could hear, could hear her, but Vivi has had two knee surgeries. She's 14. And so there's PT exercises that she, um, has let go by the wayside um, since she's no longer in physical therapy. So she said she's incorporating that into her daily workouts too. So. That's a lot of wonderful. Hey, uh, quick thing, Cole. It sounds like uh, Dave's trying to get in, but he can't. Maybe because we're recording, he can't come right in. Is there a way for you to check? Scott uh, said that yeah, Dave's that, trying to get in. That shouldn't that shouldn't cause any issues. Um, here, I can. What do you know his email? Uh, it's. I think it's Dave Corrett. Hold on one second. I can pull it up. Here, I'll, I'll post the, uh, I've, I've got a question to ask Linda and Vivian here. So I'm going to post the uh, the link into the chat really quick. Yeah, it's a David Core at Comcast.net. Okay, do you mind just forwarding him the link again? It might just be, um, yeah, there, there's no password or anything on this link. This is just my personal, like, Zoom. Okay. Screen. Yeah. Sorry, oh. Linda. No, that's okay. Um, cool. So Linda, I have a question just to kind of elaborate, like while we're talking about wins and we'll get to yeah. uh, Scott and Carlos in just a sec. Um, so for Linda and Vivian, you said that you've kind of been focusing a little bit more on breakfast. Was that like kind of like the biggest change that you made was starting to focus a little bit more on protein this week? Is that kind of what I'm hearing? 
Um, I feel like that was kind of, yeah, like the biggest win because I usually don't like have breakfast in the morning. I don't usually get up early enough to have time to eat. Um, but yeah, I think that was, um, besides like mom's meal planning, I think it was over the more, as I said, prominent things um, for our wins. I think we also both, like when we were meeting last week, um, our a big takeaway was needing to increase our protein intake. So um, that's definitely going to be on the forefront of my mind when we're trying to put together um, everyone's meal plans for this week. Yeah. And we'll be talking plenty about protein later on today with a little bit of a discussion. So if you have any questions about protein specifically, hopefully we can answer some questions there. Um, Before we, before we move on to the win, um, before we move on to someone else, uh, one thing that I find is important is when you're thinking about that win, what is it that why what is it that that made you feel or how did you feel adding those adding the breakfast do it you know cooking the food instead of going to fast food how did that feel in the in the moment and the next day like did it make any you know how did it make any difference well I definitely there's definitely a sense of like even a small sense of accomplishment when you make one choice that's better than a different choice and so I think that that's easy to easier to build on and I, for one, tend to be, um, I don't know, I, it, it, it's some things, goals seem really insurmountable and I don't, you know, want to stick to them because <laughs> it just feels like it's never going to happen. So it's always nice to like, you know, you're really good at making us acknowledge a win and that's something that feels like you can build off of and it just motivates you and gives you a little more power. Mm-hmm. Right. It sounds like, it sounds like that's exactly right. That you're, you're talking about steps and that you're each step that you're taking, like the fast food thing, from what I remember from previous weeks, that's a big step, right? Because yeah. generally it sounds like you put, you have fast food at least, or have had fast food at least once or twice a week. Oh, a definitely. as a family of five, a hundred percent. Like I, I, if I don't have like a plan and a recipe in front of me and the ingredients for it and everyone's starving, then that's, we're ordering a pizza. (laughs) So, right. So that's, those are all big. Those are, you know, the, it's all about building the foundation. We build a foundation of knowledge. We build a foundation of choices so that each time we build and each time we repeat that choice, that choice no longer becomes over time. Doesn't it no longer becomes a choice that we're making. It's just how we do things. Right. Yeah. And so what I'm hearing you say is that you're putting down some of those foundational blocks, the breakfast blocks, the cooking versus fast food and the organizational blocks that will allow those habits to become uh, a part of who you are. Yeah. Like, you know, there's a, there's this thing that, uh, you know, like there are people that go running and then there are runners. Right. And it's, a, there's a switch in the way people see themselves as they make these choices consistently mm-hmm. that they become that person like I don't eat fast food like mm-hmm. that's and that at some point making those choices when people are like oh why don't we just get this you're like oh I'm sorry I don't eat I, I don't eat fast food it's not what I do yeah. right whereas you know before it was something that you did and that was the habit right so it's it's all very positive to hear that those those bricks that you're putting down uh that they feel right and that they feel good and it, I send I hear a sense of peace in those decisions yeah when you talk about them so yeah. okay really what about what about uh you Carlos so we're, we're uh talking about you said victories or uh yeah like what do you feel good about like you're I know you're very scientific about every, all your all your stuff you've got like mapped out as to how you're going to do it so how do you feel about how your last week went with those goals of strength and lean and um jujitsu yeah i have i haven't done jujitsu since i got back because the schedule changed you know i usually go in the morning um so i'd like to get back in this up next coming week um but in terms of the way you know i'm gonna i'm trying to do my deficit to lose you know fat is that i've been doing i just want to do one fast per week um and so when I got back last weekend and then today, I have successfully done two 24-hour fasts. Um, 
so I'm pretty happy about that and it's not too difficult um feel pretty good um and I did get a solid week of training in or at least lifting weights because the gym was really empty and that was kind of cool um but yeah I feel pretty good um you know I just got to do this for a few weeks you know until uh I reach my goal whatever that is you know so let me ask you how do you how do you foresee yourself after the goal like it sounds like it's it's sometimes when you talk about it, it almost sounds like it's a physical it's like a personal experiment that you're doing with yourself to see how lean you can get how do you foresee when you reach that goal then what then what goes on yeah it is kind of a, a an experiment too because it's it, I just like to mess with things and see how it goes but um I don't know I can either stay or kind of slightly get bigger and try to get stronger or I could kind of just stay there and it kind of depends on what I, I feel like doing because I also want to do more jujitsu and like do jujitsu a lot and uh if I want to like I guess bulk up um it's kind of hard to bulk up with 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 doing a lot of jujitsu and that's kind of what I ran into trouble um with the last 12 weeks is like trying to do too much jujitsu or trying to lift too much weights so I don't know I'm it might just be stay there and try to slowly put on some muscle or just stay there and train jujitsu or try to do a combination of both. But like I said, I, I tend to overtrain a lot. So I got to be careful with that. And is your, your goal that you're working towards, is it uh, more like, is, is it equally, cause you're, you're talking about three things. You're talking about the physical leanness, right? The, the body composition part. And then you're talking about two different sort of two different kinds of performance, the the bulk strength and then the the agility and the endurance and the power and the, you know, of jujitsu. Is it does one way more than the other in your mind? Is, or are you just not quite sure? It's just all kind of a fluid. It's yeah, I'm not quite sure. And it's, it's kind of a struggle. Like, which one do I want to do more? Because I, I really like jujitsu. But you know, you don't train jujitsu, you're not going to get better. But I really, I really like lifting weights too. So it's, I don't know, it's kind of hard to, to pick. So I'm trying to find a balance between the two, where it's not too much. Because I've definitely done it where it's too much, and you just don't feel good, and you're probably not making any progress at all at that point. So, yeah, I'm trying to figure, okay. figure it out, and I, I hope at some point I'll, I'll figure it out over time. Well, that's also what we're here for right now, Carlos. That's, we can we can definitely help you out. Like, um, my specialty here is really for helping you all figure out your nutrition and your performance simultaneously, because um, I'm in the middle of doing the same thing and have for ten years. Um, so it's uh, one thing that we we can definitely work on, um, but we should try to like. So one one thing that's uh, like for this is pulling away a win or a victory from this past week is it sounds like it sounds like your win was just making sure that you got in the gym and enjoying the thing that you're trying to do with your body right like at the end of the day like you're trying to be very intense and physical with your body and you got the chance to do that this week albeit without jujitsu um like when when you were lifting like uh did you have any joint pains or anything like that were, are, are you feeling good no uh, yeah yeah it's just it's fun i love lifting and yeah i don't have any joint pains i'm pretty healthy yeah so yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe just finding that balance could be your goal for this next week. Um, but we should definitely refine your the specific aim of whatever it is we're trying to do for the next six weeks, five weeks. Um, because uh, like, if you want to achieve all of those goals, you at least have to take one step forward towards one of them. Um, and if right now your, your goal is leanness, then we should focus primarily on your nutrition and understanding your level of activity. Um, so if you've got a set schedule, like we can do that and then talk about like, that's probably how many calories you're actually burning each day. I mean, you're, you're, what, what do you, what do you weigh right now, Carlos? Um, uh, like 185. And I, I do track my calories. I have a pretty good idea of how many calories I should be eating to lose weight or to lose fat. Um, and I have, I have kind of prioritized, I have put jujitsu on the, towards the, the back of my goals right now, just cause it's, it's like really hard on the body, especially if you're training hard. Um, 
but yeah, I do track my calories really careful. I have a pretty good idea of the deficit I need to be in to slowly lose weight. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, we we can take a look at those uh that stuff later. But it sounds like it sounds like you're you know you're already moving forward with it, so that's good. And I did I did lose weight, and it did lose a noticeable amount of fat, just because I can tell. Just, but yeah. Sure. Cool, man. That's awesome. Well, nice work. Uh, and we can always, like, like we said earlier, we can always get you a, a body fat percentage test, like even a quick free one. That way you have like an idea of where you're currently sitting until you get the more specific DEXA scan that you can get from U of I or bod pod from WSU. So. All right, Scott, you're up. What's your win or wins? Uh, my big win for the week is, um, you know, taking in more protein and higher calories than I've been doing, uh, which surprisingly wasn't. Um, didn't make me feel, you know, weighted down from eating more than what I have been calorie wise on a basis. So, um, and I guess it, it, it feels good to be working back more into that structure of actually keeping track of it. Um, I was always just keeping track of that. I had eaten at the times that I'm supposed to, um, now I'm back to tracking what it is I'm eating intake at those times. So, um, which is really what I did when I very first started um, my whole health journey of getting healthy. And uh, that made a big difference. So I think just that keeping track of actually writing it down, um, it feels good again. So hopefully that's going to really start to reflect. Um, still, I just, I guess I just putting my faith and trust in you guys that this is right. Cause it just, uh, I'm, I'm consuming more calories than I have in quite a while. So. I don't, I really don't want to be packing on any more weight per se. Yeah. Well, and we're going to talk about this a bit more, but we have to remember it's the same thing when it comes to protein. Uh, when we're talking about calories, if you're not eating enough, you will not lose weight. So it yeah. seems like, oh, I, I don't like putting on these extra calories because I'm going to gain weight. Unfortunately, or fortunately, if you don't eat those extra calories, you're not going to lose weight, right? So it's, it's finding out what your metabolism is doing to see how many calories you actually need to make a deficit, what your metabolism actually doing, because the math is, it's, it's an art and a science. It's not just science, to be honest. And so, um, especially once you get into our age bracket, right, we've got, we've had a whole lifetime of messing with our metabolisms. And so we have to be a little bit open to the idea that we might have to increase our calories. We might have to shake up our routine in order for our body to go weight. You know, there's, there's uh, have more of an abundant mindset inside your body so that your body stops restricting itself and, and slowing down your metabolism. Like we talked about last week. So, um, I know it feels weird. Same thing for anyone that starts to increase their protein. You're like, I can't believe I have to eat this much protein, right? Because we've been under protein for so long. Um, but once we, once our body starts to adapt and it starts to speed up, you're like, you know, you can, you can eat more you feel lighter, um, and then you get a lot of the other benefits that having enough protein has, right? You know, your your joints feel better, um, your skin looks better, like everything starts to get better once you start increasing in the ways that we need to. Um, a lot, a lot like when you start drinking enough water. Right. You know, everybody's like, oh, I, I, there's no way I can drink that much water. And now that I drink huge amounts of water, it's like, man, it's nothing. Exactly. It it's all in the steps. Yeah. It's actually, this is a perfect, uh, a perfect time to kind of think a little bit about this. Can you all see this? Mm -hmm. So kind of on that same note that, uh, that Kathy was just talking about and referring to Scott, your thing here, I've got a laser. Where's the draw function? Oh, it's literally right here. Um, we have, uh, our, our body kind of looks a little bit like this or, or, or like, so we, we talked about resting metabolic rate last, last week. Um, Carlos, do you know what resting metabolic rate is? Yes. So, um, this resting metabolic rate sits in kind of a window and it's a window sort of based on the optimal calorie output. So if we have kind of calories right here, sorry, I'm writing with this. I don't have my, I don't have like a notepad on me right now. We have calories right here. And we just kind of have time right here on the bottom. What we're looking at is there's kind of this window right here where you're taking in a certain number of calories 
So if I'm, if I'm up here and I'm taking in this many calories right here, as long as I'm kind of within this window, like maybe over here, like if this is a dotted line right here, this dotted line is my RMR. I'm just going to label it R because I don't feel like drawing the other Rs. Um, if the bottom line is RMR and then I'm above this RMR or I'm above my total calorie intake for the day, then I'm going to be still, my metabolism is on and it's working fast. If I'm a little bit below it, it's on and it's working fast. But if you're below this line, this is weight loss. If you're above this line for whatever your total daily energy expenditure is, that's weight gain, right? And Carlos, that's what you're referring to when you're thinking about like you have an understanding of where you are for gentle weight loss. And one of the reasons why gentle weight loss is the most important way to sort of think about it because it sets up long-term health and you're not like in a huge energy deficit. Scott, when, what you may, be, may have been experiencing for a while was kind of if you were down here, it actually takes your RMR and it, sh and it shelters it down. So your metabolism will actually slow down to be here. So if you've been consistently taking in this many calories, this is how many calories your body's going to be used to taking in and burning, and it's going to maintain your weight there, regardless of some of your activity level. So then as now, right here, as you're starting to kind of come back up here and sort of gently moving back up to what your body should be taking, this is where that art is that Kathy was talking about, um, to be closer to where that is, now you're kind of back in this metabolic window. And there's going to be a brief period in a, a, where you might see a weight increase again. And that's just because your body's filling back out, your car carbohydrates or fats that are filling out muscles um, and just providing extra energy. So as long as we're in this window, we'll see a nice weight loss or weight gain um, that isn't excessive. So Carlos, if you end up going to bulk later on, you want to be very slightly above this, above this range. But we know that if we go too far above this range, we stack on fat very quickly. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and there's also a slow or a, a change in our metabolism as a result of eating too much. So we want to stay within this window as best we can for seeing optimal results around there. The nice thing about this, and this is also to talk about Carlos's um, area, is if you stick right at this number, if we try to hit exactly our total daily energy expenditure without a little bit of weight loss or without, um, uh, without being a deficit or being over, then you actually see a body composition switch. So a lot of times you'll maintain a similar weight overall, but you'll actually see muscle increase and fat decrease. So a lot of times a maintenance phase can be a really good place for Scott to kind of reestablish your new metabolism or Linda to reestablish your new metabolism or Carlos for you to reestablish your metabolism prior to going into another deficit or an increase. So does that make sense? So I wanted to briefly talk about that because we want to make sure that we like are seeing this stuff visually whenever. Um, and that's really what, like Scott, you said, you're putting, putting a little bit of your trust in us. Um, that, I mean, this is, that's trusting your body, right? You're, um, at the end of the day, you're trusting your body to do what it's supposed to do when you get the, get the right number of calories. So that's awesome. I think that's a huge win. Uh, sorry, one more little note. Um, so Dave sent me a message saying that it's saying that he needs an ID to get in. Why would that be? Uh, couldn't be, but let me grab the ID. I signed in with my, you know, my email account and it sent me a code and I put that in. That's the route. He might I not went. be using like um, an app. He might or the or just like that could be it. My mine might not allow guest guests in. You may have to actually sign in specifically. That's probably what it is. I'll say that. Uh, Kathy, should we move on to while well, you're doing that? We can move on to uh, kind of the the barriers. Um. Well, actually, beforehand, I would like to know, Cole, what your wins were since you're doing the challenge. Sure. Um, I, I haven't really talked about what my goals were, but I uh, early on in the in the year, I sustained a pretty bad pec tear. Um, so my my activity level tanked, and I was still lifting and stuff, but um, you know, I was going from burning 
4,000 calories a day to burning 2,700, and I was still eating like I was burning 4,000 calories a day, so I put on probably like 8 or 10 pounds. Um, and so my goal was to just reestablish, you know, my, uh, my working routine simultaneously while sticking to a meal plan. For me, like, just getting to a meal plan is the thing that sort of sets my goal. I don't really have a specific weight loss goal. But for me, my goal is sticking to a meal plan. Um, and that's, uh, I track using the Renaissance periodization app and it's specifically for strength and conditioning. Um, it's not, uh, it's, it's centered around being, doing CrossFit, doing strength and conditioning, and then having some other things that looks like this. Um, so I track my food on here. It tells me, uh, and like I, I do the math usually by myself, but, um, this tracks macros for me and then it tracks meal adherence. So I'm able to go in and see like, if I work out for a day, it adds on carbohydrates because it's primarily carbohydrates for me that's uh, that affects energy levels. So I have like a 90 or I, I had 100% um, meal adherence this week. Um, not exactly at the right times, but I ate exactly the number of calories required. Um, and another huge win was I saw a massive decrease in inflammation just because I usually when I'm increasing weight, um, it's because I'm snacking a lot or I'm eating a lot of, you know, whatever. Um, but since I just essentially just remove snacking and then my meals are literally like, not even kidding y'all, it's like two and a half pounds three times a day. Um, I've somehow lost taking in seven pounds of food a day. I've somehow lost six or seven pounds already. So, um, most of that's water weight though. So, you know, don't expect that to be something similar for you all, but that's what, that's uh, a huge win for me. That's great. And so, um, you notice the inflammation. Do you notice anything else in terms of those pillars we talked about in terms of sleep, um, stress, how it's helping you uh, in, in other areas besides besides just the weight loss and the inflammation? Absolutely. Uh, my stress levels have decreased quite a bit. Um, my, my, my daily like feeling of being stressed has tanked uh, to a, like tanked to a good point where like, I'm happier. I feel, I feel a little bit more upbeat, more energetic just in the past four or five days, as opposed to even just last week. So. Great. Okay. So then, um, if anyone wants to know my update Absolutely. on my brain health, of course you do. Uh, thanks, okay. thanks for asking. <laughs> thanks for asking. <laughs> oh, wait. So yes. Yeah, so I cut out a lot of things. I cut out grain, dairy, gluten, which, um, goes with grain. Um, I cut out, uh, let's see, all sugar, alcohol, and, um, I cut out soy products, processed foods and meat. I cut out just beef and, uh, pork just because they eat grains and various things that I'm not eating. So I don't want to eat what they eat, so to speak. So I cut that out. And my goal is for brain health, just to see if it can help me uh, keep track of things better, be clear in my thoughts, be able to stay on task for longer periods of time. And uh, I've stuck to all of it. I haven't strayed at all, which I feel great about. Uh, and brain wise, it's not like my memory recall from a long time ago is suddenly clearer, but I am noticing a marked difference in how I feel uh, just in terms of the day-to-day -day. more energetic clear with my mind better mood uh, much better able to handle stress so a lot of things seem to be clearing out and i was going to mention the weight loss part so last week this is my second week doing that my first week i also eating a lot of food but taking out the grains and the sugar and anything processed i also lost i'm not trying to lose weight but i lost um whatever four pounds but then this week my body's like, wait a minute. And so I'm back. I've gained pretty much that back, um, which is fine. It's, it's a, an interesting process to see what your body does when you change up what, what you're eating or what you're consuming. And so I'm interested to see in the next week or two, how that stabilizes or how that either reduces down and, and kind of meets in the middle um, is what is what I'm going to, so what I kind of expect to not go as low as the lowest was, but to go somehow meet somewhere in that two pounds under what I started with. Um, so yeah, all in all, it's been very positive. 
Can I ask a quick question? Um, the yeah. foods that you chose to cut out, are they specifically associated with inflammation? Are they associated? What was the reason for those choices? Yeah, that's a good question. So a couple of things for one, uh, uh, digestively, it's difficult to digest uh, certain things like the grains um, for a lot of people. And so when you're kind of going through a like, let's just revamp, let's just like jumpstart, reboot your metabolism, pulling back from all of those things are considered healthy because they do cause, they, they can cause, it doesn't mean they're causing inflammation in you in particular, but because it's too complicated to pinpoint, you take you know, you remove a lot of those things. Is it basically um, the concept of an elimination diet? It's sort of, it sort of is. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I didn't go totally like they would also argue to take out eggs, for example. And I didn't do that because that's a, ma a major source of protein for me. Okay. Uh, and I, you know, if I see that there, I need to, then I could take that out on its own after I do these other things. Um, but I don't think that that's something that's like, I feel really good eating eggs. So um, the grains though, uh, when I did my labs, which is why I always encourage people to do uh, comprehensive metabolic tests, they found that I was under significant toxic load. And so their grains often uh, absorb mycotoxins uh, as well as uh, say glyphosate or other pesticides and herbicides that can mess with your metabolism and, and cause inflammation. And also uh, tend to go up in your brain if you're having, you know, that's where uh, toxins go to thrive is in your brain. So because my lab showed that I had some low white blood cell count and some other pieces along with the severe brain fog, their, their thought is that I probably have a significant toxic load. So that's why I just decided to take it all out to see if that freeze, if that somehow clarifies a little bit in my brain decreases inflammation. So that was why those choices were made. And the thing with the taking out the, I took out pork and beef and then shellfish. And that's just because pork and beef, they eat, they, they're finished or they eat, um, you know, corn, soy products. They have various things put in their feed if they're feedlot animals. And then um, I take out shellfish because they're bottom feeders and like shrimp, as much as I love them, they just eat garbage, right? So for me to put that in when I'm trying to cleanse doesn't make sense, so. Thank you. That's really helpful. Nice. All right. So then I think we're, we are going to talk about any, I mean, we've all kind of, we're all kind of doing different things. And I think um, it sounds like some people are sort of know what their next steps are, but if we could maybe go through the group and see what uh, obstacles you ran into last week or the week before, or what you foresee with your, you know, current next step. Uh, what what are you apprehensive about or what obstacles do you foresee for the coming week? Linda, do you want to start since uh, you were first asking? Sure. Yeah, one of the things that Kathy and I talked about before too and um, is I, my concern about, uh, I, I'm not someone who usually works really well with a plan. I'm a little bit like all over the place. So meal planning, I'm concerned that we'll just get bored with whatever we decided to plan. But Kathy and I talked about, you know, ways to be um, productive um, with a meal prep on a Sunday and not have it equal the same exact meal every day of the week. Um, and that's not something I want. That's not something. There are members of my family actually who would be totally fine eating the same thing every day, but that's not me. So um, that's just something I'm really mindful about. Um, I want to, I'm, I'm nervous about the meal planning being a barrier, but I also know that it will relieve a lot of planning stress for me throughout the week. Can I ask you a quick question? I know not everyone did the character survey, but could you tell me what, do you remember what your top five character strengths are? I happen to have it right in front of me, Miss Kathy. And um, I'll tell you like sticking to a plan and goal setting, we're at the bottom of the list. <laughs> uh, my top five are love, humor, perspective, social intelligence, and leadership. And that's probably pretty spot on. Linda, those are my exact five. No. <laughs> That's are you awesome. serious? Yeah, those are my five. That's <laughs> really funny. Well, and the reason why I asked you is because as you were speaking in the way that you were speaking about your challenges, maybe 
curious about which they were because the um which one which when when it, you, you think about what you just said which one of those five do you think repre is represented in that in that uh, response i don't know perspective maybe i don't know like I, what do you think i don't i don't really know if i know how to answer that yeah, well, so perspective is a great, is exactly what I thought of when, <laughs> when you were talking, because you have, you're sort of like looking from the outside, you're talking about your family. So the social intelligence part of understanding the dynamic of your family yeah. um, and understanding, having the perspective, being able to pull yourself and out enough to, to look at it from a broad view to say, okay, well, this is the dynamic in my family. These are, these are my, you know, my mindset about how I go about eating is this how my family goes about eating or, or their, their concept? How, you know, how can I bridge the gap between what we're currently doing, given this social dynamic, and what I know is going to help me in the long run? And that right there is a very winning combination of steps in your mind when you're, when you're thinking about an issue when it comes to your health, right? Because there are all those variables. And so understanding and leaning on those strengths of yours um, mm -hmm. like perspective or social intelligence or the leadership of taking charge obviously of the situation and with your family and the food you know all of those things are ways that you know there are strengths that you can pull on you can lean on uh, when you're facing the obstacles for example yeah so on, on that note I actually uh, does anybody else have did anybody else experience that same barrier with the meal planning or sticking to a plan for the week? Scott, Carlos, did you feel that? No, I, I'm the, I'm the guy that eats the same thing every day. So same. Um, yeah. Okay. Scott, how about you? <laughs> You're muted, Scott. I'm pretty simple too. If it can just be a grab and go, that's the way I, like it um i like to eat often just small amounts so you know tell me what simple proteins to make up in a couple of simple meals and i'd eat the same thing every day every meal doesn't matter okay yeah good to know um with the with respect to the meal planning linda is it is it more of an issue because it, because you're trying to think about your whole family simultaneously or is it an issue because you personally feel like you don't want to stick to that like the same meals every day you know my family's pretty easy going in like they're like when I cook and, and put food in front of them they're really grateful they're really they're easy they're sweet you know um because they recognize that I've done the work and so all they you know <laughs> I don't necessarily um worry so much about that I I know for it to be sustainable for me like I love to just there's a particular website I love to find her recipes and then get those ingredients and cook that thing and it could be something I, I like the variety of trying something new and that's part of a creative process for me um so when we're talking about meal planning I, what I've done in the past is pull a few of my favorite chefs different recipes and then um, buy the groceries for that and then that's our meals for three or four days out of the week so I think I need to, I, I think I can still do some of that, but then um, I'm nervous about how I'm going to incorporate, like, I want it to be easy and sustainable. Like how Kathy was saying, you roast a bunch of carrots. And so like, they're a side dish one day of the week, then they can become a soup then they can become a sauce. Um, I want something that's, that's logical like that so that I can still have some variety throughout the week. Um, like really overproduce, as you said, um, a couple of items and then they're easy to throw together on a night, you know? So I, I, if there was like a, a menu in front of me that makes me feel safer. Like I can follow that. That's a, a perfect little formula. That sounds great to me. Um, so I, I haven't done the research yet for what that's going to look like this week. That's totally okay. Linda, have, do you remember when I was showing you, um, chat GPT? Uh, last week oh that's right I totally forgot about that yeah you can literally just take uh just take like the an idea and Carlos you can do the same thing Scott you can do the same thing you can take a list of what's in your fridge or just a list of like hey these are the ingredients I want to eat this week like I'm, yeah. I'm gonna eat I'm gonna have beef I'm gonna have pork mm -hmm. uh and I'm gonna have tofu right and those are the three protein ingredients that I'm gonna have I'm gonna have rice bread 
or if you're not doing any grains or anything like that, you've got your veggie sources, whatever. You just plug in all of those ingredients and you say, these are the ingredients I want to work with. And then have chat GPT, it can actually make you just examples, right? Examples yeah. of recipes. And you can go in and find those versions of recipes. It can be an inspiration thing that kind of yeah. helps take that, like, it, it removes that barrier of like, well, not here's a plan. Here's a bunch of things that I can do. And, and you can even tell it to vary your meal plan from day to day and have okay. three or four major recipes overall that you can prepare easily. Um, and, you know, and we can also go back and forth on, on those and, and feel free to like reach out to the group chat or, or anything like that. Okay. Um, like what recipes do you incorporate with, you know, your vegetables or anything like that. So it can be a really great way to reduce that barrier. Thank you for that reminder. I, yeah, it's a great resource. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing that you can do, which it, maybe this is more of an advanced thing, but it, it doesn't have to be, is that you can take, and I was thinking of making a, a PDF of this, but you can take, if you had a list of the proteins that your family likes to eat, you have a list of the main vegetables that you see are reasonably priced at the moment. You have a, a you know, a small list of the, the type of starches or, or carbs that your family likes to eat that can be, you know, and then you have um, the cooking style. You can have stir fry, air fryer, roasted, you know, slow cooked, all the different things. And if it's variety that you want, you just do, 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 oh, right. And then you have all, you have another column that has um, whatever ethnicity type foods you like. So if you like Mexican, you know, American, Chinese, whatever it is, and you just zigzag across, and then you know, like that's your your inspiration is found there, and then you can say, Chat GPT, give me a recipe for do 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 do, and okay. then it it can actually give you a recipe that, of course, you know you have to take with a grain of salt, but it at least gives you a sort of if you will, if you kind of like enjoy the process, but then after that you get sort of overwhelmed with all the choices, you just can do it that way. So that it gives you a, a specific thing to ask okay. aside from just like looking in your fridge and going, okay, these are my <laughs> ingredients. So that's another, that's another way yeah. um, that you can do it. And the third way I really do like is where you, especially for things that hold well, like sweet potatoes, rice, uh, other vegetables that you can roast, things that you can put in as a base so that you have you know, you have blanched broccoli, you have white sweet potatoes, you have, you know, chicken marinated in salsa, I don't know, you know, whatever. Uh, you have things that, so that when it comes time, you know, one day it's, you know, those pieces and you have pan, pan seared chicken that's baked off in the oven. You have the air fryer, you cut it into strips, then it becomes a stir fry. So you're still doing this, you know, you can either vary the cooking technique, the ethnicity of the food or the, um, sort of the way that it's presented mm -hmm. so that you, there's lots of ways that you can have the same ingredients create a lot of different choices and that way you don't get bored but it doesn't overwhelm you because yeah. you're like I just like I have the protein the the carb this is these are my fat choices and then you just have them in those glass ideally um or, uh, storage containers yeah so that you know then you have things organized because Things like uh, sweet potatoes, rice, potatoes, um, carrots. There's lots of those things that can be roasted. And then things like you can quick blanch and then put them in ice water, things like broccoli, asparagus. Then after that, it's very quick to like, you can make your meal in 15 minutes. Okay. Whatever the protein takes 20 minutes in the air fryer, your chicken thigh is done. Okay. That's awesome. I can say, uh, I can say that that, second one the second version is exactly how i've learned to meal plan over the course of the past about 12 years um it started off with uh me just kind of like bodybuilding recipes that i found on bodybuilding.com right and so it was brown mm -hmm. rice chicken and veggies and it was just disgusting after about a month um my palate got to a point where i couldn't handle it anymore so it's like um and i'm the type of person who can eat the same thing over and over and i eventually got sick of it so it's really finding those and just varying spices and all of those. I'd like, like Kathy hit the nail on the head. I can tell you it's very sustainable. Um, and typically how, how I've always taught meal prep is exactly that. It's just very, the types of cooking and you can slow cook a chunk of beef or you can put it in the oven and it's going to completely change the checks, the texture, the flavor profile, all of those things. And that's without spices. So 
once you start adding in spices, it completely changes the way that your palate will observe it. And so you can have one, you can buy one giant 45 pound, you know, chunk of beef and cook it 17 different ways over the course of two weeks and, uh, and still be, you know, all in this, in the same general protein family. And that way you just know, this is how much I'm going to grab of this meat, but it's going to be cooked different ways. So, um, I a hundred percent am on board with all of those suggestions. I like that. Yeah, actually one more thing. So if you were to take one of your favorite chef's recipes and you're like, this is easy. I feel comfortable with this. I've done this a million times, but you don't want to eat it a million times in a row. Is that you, I used to do this all the time when I worked on yachts and you had to switch things because they never wanted the same thing twice. Is that I would literally take, take the, the, if it's a pasta dish, right? And then you say, okay, well, how would I make this? How would I make this Italian pasta dish Japanese? Well, you'd have to change out the marinade. You, you know, there's just a few things that you, but the cooking process is the same, but you're just changing out. You're putting mirin in instead of lemon juice. You're putting, you know, you're putting soy sauce or you're putting uh, coconut aminos in instead of soy sauce. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's just ways that you can take something that you feel comfortable with because that makes things fast. And then you just vary it in the, you switch up the spices, you know, if you're going to you change it, similar kind of thing, but you change it into Indian by putting cardamom and, you know, like you, you can get those, maybe I'll even make those little lists of, you know, this, the spices and herbs that go with the different types of food. And then you can also just go with a recipe you feel completely comfortable cooking. And then you're just switching up the flavor profile and maybe the marinating sauce. And then you've taken that one meal and you've like re refreshed it seven times. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What about you, Scott? Any obstacles? Uh, no, just a matter of knowing, um, I guess, which proteins to be using or if there's a difference in proteins or is just protein protein at this point in the game. And do you mean like chicken versus beef versus fish or? Yeah, or plant protein or. You can definitely talk about that really quick. Um, just to address that as a, as a question really fast. Um, up to a point, no, there is no difference. Until there is. So what I mean by that is getting adequate levels of protein is the more important thing first. Just regardless of the source, whatever the source is, getting an adequate level of, of protein is the most important thing. Um, once you finally are meeting that level, uh, diversifying the way that you're taking in that protein can dramatically affect your gut health. It can dramatically affect your performance because there's other nutrition that is associated with those different types of protein. For example, uh, a white fish versus a stand a white fish versus like a pink fish like tilapia versus salmon salmon is incredibly fatty in comparison but it's also pound for pound significantly higher in protein but it's associated with more fat versus tilapia is essentially just one hunk of protein that swims around in the ocean um so th these different types of fish are going to have different like nutrient profiles associated with them they also have different mineral profiles and vitamin profiles um so it's, but at the end of the day, protein, when we think about protein, protein is one of 26 different amino acids, or it's, it's a, num a string of 26 different amino acids combined in large versions or in just long strings. Um, so at the end of the day, protein really is just protein, but the source that it comes from is associated with so many other types of health concerns. Um, and I don't mean health concern as in a bad thing, but a health concern as in, again, that vitamin profile, but the amount of fats coming from it um, and whether or not it's even bioavailable. And what I mean by bioavailable is how fast it's digestible. Um, one thing that's really important to consider, like vegan, vegan forms of proteins, like uh, beans uh, are an incredibly common form of protein for people to take in as a, uh, as a vegan or vegetarian those are also associated with very high levels of fiber, high levels of nitrogen. So like, not kidding, people are just farting all day. They're just, they're, they're farting all the time. They're pooping like three to five times a day and it's really uncomfortable. So that's like, you know, if you don't want to be dealing with that, you might have to find another form of protein. 
Um, there's other types of beans that are lower in total fiber that you can look at as well. So I've made this now more complicated, but the answer to your initial question is yes, there is a, there is a difference in protein, but only once you've started to really achieve the adequate level of protein that you're taking in each day. So I'd say if we're already there, then, you know, you may want to start considering like how each protein is making you feel. Um, I process ground beef really well. I process all sorts of beef really well. Pork slows me down. Um, and it could be many of those, those inflammatory factors that, uh, um, that Kathy was talking about earlier for one of the reasons why she could, she's cutting out pork. Could, those could be exactly the same factors for me as well. So paying attention to that can really help you narrow those things down. On, on that note, like what kind of proteins have you been eating this week? Like what's uh, most, most of my proteins are probably, um, well, or a little over half of them are probably uh, plant-based and or whey type protein. Um, and the other half, animal okay. i guess the other the other thing is um i guess question along with that is you know the whole um are you taking in protein based on what your target healthy weight is to be or are you taking in protein based on where your current weight is sure um that matters more the more active you are um what what is your do you remember what your current uh I just off the top of my head I don't remember what your your current goal intake is. Well, my resting metabolic rate is around that nineteen seventy five. Um, seventy five. And then what was your what was um? Well, do you remember what your protein goal is like this whole week? Do you remember what you were sh were shooting for? Well, I'm assuming I need to be shooting around that 168 because that's where the the um, that's where the charts say for my height I should weigh, but I have no idea if that's right or not. I mean, I'm assuming that weight's gonna fall out to where it falls out when I get my my fat down to a healthy level as far as my BMI is considered. Um, but um, I was um averaging around that 100 to 105 grams of protein a day and this week i'm up to that 150 range okay i would say that's a fantastic place to be 150 minimum for uh for anybody in in your weight range whether current or your ideal weight range is perfect um so hitting that and that's this is where pr protein is a really funny like nebulous goal because we start with it but uh science doesn't currently understand how much protein humans really need like certain diets tell me that i need 250 grams of protein but there's also some things that like like adequate health is like around 90 grams of protein for my body weight um i'm above 90 that's the thing that matters the most now if you're starting to look more towards uh like shifting, shifting body composition, having higher levels of protein can really associate with that. So you're above sort of that 100, 100 grams. Um, 150 is a really great place to start that doesn't involve really expensive meats, hard to, pro uh, hard, like constantly eating too, too much protein. You don't have to supplement from too many places. I'd say if you stick at least with that 150, 160 range each day, um, you're very likely to be able to see great health benefits and it's not going to um, affect any of your performance levels um, you'll see fat loss still with with that level of protein for sure so how much of that should be out of animal proteins or at this point it doesn't matter a protein is a protein for the beginning part i would say making sure that we get consistent first before we and then paying attention over the course of the next couple of weeks really paying attention to how you feel when you eat those different types of proteins, because you very well could absolutely benefit hugely from having more plant-based proteins, but they also might upset your stomach. Um, for me, I have a hard time processing pea protein, um, but I can take in a protein made from crickets and I feel great. So it's like, um, there's, there's a bunch of different ways. So that's, I personally, I think that we should just pay attention more. And, uh, cause I don't, I, 
I really registered dietitians don't even know what the appropriate rotation of how much plant versus animal protein people really should be taking. Um, so on heavy workout days, where do you time your protein to a workout? Um, I don't worry about timing of protein for a workout. As long as you're taking in an adequate level of protein throughout the day, your body's going to be metabolizing it consistently throughout the day. Your blood levels of your amino acids are going to be high. Um, and your muscles are going to process them. The, the more important thing for timing around activity level is carbohydrates. So, uh, and typically we would recommend for exercise prior to exercise, having a little bit of protein. So like 10 to 15 grams with carbohydrates prior to your exercise, um, makes those proteins available during your exercise routine. So whatever we're doing, whether it's jujitsu or you're coming in, you're doing uh, functional fitness. Um, a little bit of protein is going to digest, and then you've got a, uh, a little bit of carbohydrates that is going to be there as fuel for your workout. Um, that's one of the current recommendations that I've seen. Lately. And when, when you're saying that, are you talking about a uh, protein powder and, uh, uh, powdered carbohydrates or what would your, what, what would the timing be in the real food example of that be? Sure. Um, it can be a protein powder. Like I used to do uh, this disgusting thing where I would put uh, Gatorade powder and protein powder together. Um, and that was like, I just drank it because it was fine. And that's what I needed because I couldn't, I couldn't afford to get any whole food sources and I didn't have time to, to have a meal separately prepped. I don't necessarily recommend that because my stomach did not like that while I was working out. The other way to think about it is um, where you time that your your midday so where you time whatever meal is closest to your workout so let's say you work out at 5 p.m um, if you're eating more simple foods that are easy for your body to digest uh, thinking like a protein source that is easy for your body to digest like fish fish digests relatively well pretty fast um, let's say you have a meal of fish like a lean fish with like some fruit the, both of those things are going to be available relatively quickly. Eating within about an hour are going to make those available to you for your workout as usage for repairing muscle, as usage for activity. If you've got like, you can't eat at four o'clock and you're going to work out at five, but you can eat at three o'clock, your three o'clock meal could potentially be something like a really heavy meal. And that way, over the course of the next two hours, you have digested it. Like, so starches. Um, for those of you who may be eating starches, timing starches a couple of hours prior to your meal. So like potatoes, rices and grains, um, those kinds of things. A couple of hours prior, oatmeal, stuff like that. It will be digested and in your system, moving through your blood by the time you get to your exercise. So it'll be available immediately. What about now, for the early morning workout people? What about the people that are working out at six in the morning or five thirty in the morning, like not gonna get up at four thirty in the morning or three thirty in the morning to eat a meal to make it available. What do you suggest in that scenario? Absolutely. Um in that scenario having a large breakfast or a large dinner, excuse me. Um a really large dinner and then having something like a quick you know, just a, like a, a handful of like fruit. I don't necessarily recommend dried fruit. Uh, a handful of just like fresh cut fruit in early in the morning, right before you exercise, something that's not going to weigh you down, but will give you a little bit of a, of a blood sugar spike that will allow you to help, you know, because when your blood sugar spikes, not necessarily a great thing when your blood sugar spikes and you use that blood sugar during exercise, that's fantastic. So if you have a little bit of fruit prior to your exercise, that is, that can be really good. So, you know, maybe just timing what your breakfast looks like, um, but if you eat a lot of starchy carbs, are, does anyone remember like in, uh, in high school before like a game sport, um, there would always be uh, like, in, like when I played football in high school, for example, um, on Friday nights, they would always take us out to like Red Robin or some, some like really awful place to eat, um, but, or like Applebee's or some crap. And they would just tell us to get a ton, a ton of food, just like eat a bunch of fries, eat all these things and you carb load. The point of that is to have a lot, a lot of carbohydrates in your muscles prior to the next day's level of activity. And that sort of fuels all of that activity for the next day. So if you're working out really early in the morning, having a large dinner can really benefit you. Um, yeah. 
Does that answer those questions? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, Scott? Yes. I hope that answered your, I know that was long-winded, but I hope that answered your question. Okay. Does that, I think, we, did we get through everyone with uh, the obstacles? Carlos. No, Carlos. Carlos has no obstacles. Look at him. No, I got, I do have. <laughs> Let's hear him. My obstacle would be probably be just trying to do too much. Or, yeah, I've kind of learned that you don't need to do as much. So I need, I need to, like, recover. Um, so that's one of my goals is to just not do so much. Um, definitely. Done and how, how do you, like, you're saying that it's, it sounds very lofty and in the air. Yeah. How, how could you concretely handle that? Probably obstacle. take two two rest days per week. You know, usually I I do one rest day per week. Um, but maybe two would be better. Probably feel a lot better, and just um, be aware. Like I don't know, I'm like trying not to do two a day workouts. Um, because I've done that, and then you just feel like crap the next day. So maybe, you know, try to take two rest days per week and try not to do doubles and. Yeah. And how could you utilize your, because part of your, you, you're really like, ever since I've known you, you, you're always looking and experimenting and trying new things. How, how would you say on those rest days, how would you rest? Like, uh, how could you rest in a way that you'll feel satisfied with? Probably go for like a light walk, do some stretching um, and use the sauna. I really like to use the sauna on the rest days. That's pretty, that's pretty stress relieving or i don't know it's pretty satisfying just to mm -hmm. you know, and i like okay it. so so walking especially now with the better weather yes. taking that time using that as a way to get some of the endorphins and the dopamine that you get from your yeah. big workouts that getting that from being outside and then going into the sauna and releasing any tension that you also usually release during your workouts yeah, because I, I don't know, I, I usually work out in the morning. So there's like this chunk of time where I feel like I just have to do something, you know, so it's kind of hard to to not do something during that time. Um, and I feel like the time goes by really slow if I'm in the morning if I don't do something like that. So, so yeah, that's, a, that's you know, go for a walk, stretch and use a sauna would be a good, something good to fill that time um, gap in the morning on those days off. Yeah, that, that, that sounds like a very sounds like a very thoughtful plan especially knowing your knowing your tendency to overwork yeah to to plan for that kind of um rest and recovery and not have it be the sort of i think i'll try to language but more of a on tuesdays and thursdays i'm going to go for a walk i'm going to stretch and then i'm going to go in the sauna that's a very concrete way of taking the, the potential roadblock and kicking it over your shoulder because you've created a plan since you like you're, you're organized with how you do things um making it a making it a commitment to it, it's part of your training plan is those are those two days that have those specific ways of doing them that's my take all right so what yeah do you have any thoughts on that cole Sure. I was just going to add, um, I, so every week I write a article for my CrossFit program, um, regarding various topics, whether it's nutrition or, or recovery or you know, how to, you know, things to look at whenever we're trying to snatch or overhead squat or whatever. Um, this past week I wrote an article surrounding what rest is. Um, and I think that Carlos, you could benefit from this. So I'm going to, I'm going to forward this to, uh, to Kathy and then I'll have, I'll have her send it out to everybody, but it's really the idea of like, we need to categorize and think about rest in different ways because there are multiple forms of rest and this there's metabolic rest. Um, there are, there is central nervous system rest. There's all sorts of things. And in with nutrition, some of this is the case too. Like sometimes dieting for too long, you have to rest from a diet. Um, and need to kind of come back up and allow that metabolic system to kind of come back through. So it's like a lot of these things are mirrored in different ways. We may able to all be experiencing different, uh, different goals and different paths towards those goals, but they all have mirrored, uh, mirrored problems. Like many of us 
need rest. Some of us need rest from eating the same meal every day, Linda, or some of us need rest from this exact amount of activity we're doing, Carlos, or need rest from a specific way that we've been dieting, for example, for Scott. Um, and so keeping these things in mind can be really important. So, but anyways, this is, this is all, that's just a, you know, kind of a segue into me. I will send you all this particular, uh, this particular article, and it's just going to describe what fatigue even is physical. This is more centered around the physical piece here, but what fatigue even is, and I categorize it based on central nervous system or sort of peripheral nervous system, like your body versus your brain. Um, and a lot of the times, like for Carlos, overtraining is very central nervous system heavy. Like your body recovers really fast. And by, by incorporating, especially being young and also very active, um, by incorporating active rest days, like you were just talking about with Kathy, um, and when I say active rest, I mean moving on days where you're not necessarily working out, like doing yoga and your sauna and stuff like that, getting that blood flow, that recovers your body. Um, but sleep is the most critical version of recovery period. Te theoretically, you can work, you can work out 100% intensity for 22 hours a day. And if you were to get 100% rest in the other two hours a day, you would be completely fine, right? So it's about knowing what level of recovery is required for your physicality. And for some people, that might be 10 hours of sleep a day. For some people, it might be six. Very rarely is it six. But um, so different types of things like that. So I, I wanted to put that out there. So this is another thing like we were talking, one of our pillars is sleep. Like that's our recovery. Um, if we're seeing levels of recovery, like sleep regulates our ability to handle the nutrition the following day too. It regulates your metabolism. It regulates your ability to, to go in and handle a two a day the following day. So keep this stuff in mind when you're reading the article. Um, yeah, hope, hope that, that it will help. Kathy, where are you Thanks. Hand? Yeah, so I just, I think I just wanna finalize it with uh, that we're gonna send out um, the article that Cole wrote, um, I'm going to send out a, an a, how to read ingredients thing, just as you're looking at your choices going in this coming week of, of, of meal planning execution, uh, so that you can keep these things in mind, certain things in mind when you're looking at what a label says and what it can tell you in terms of what it's going to do for your body or not do. Um, and then I think, you know, I'll, I'll try to put together what we talked about in terms of how you can look at meal planning in those different ways of, we kind of touched on it, the bulk, the bulk prep of ingredients, the um, going through the columns of the choices you have to make so that you can just zip through the columns and make your recipes that way. And then the third idea is to take your, um, take something that you do well and then look at these columns for how you can switch it up if you're starting to get bored, like Cole did with his meal. Like if he took that, you know, you take those three components, but you wrap it up in these different, you know, you just change these different things. You suddenly have a totally, you're in a totally different part of the world, even though you're using the same three ingredients or whatever number of ingredients. So sending that tomorrow so that you can have a sense of some different ways to think about meal planning. Um, so that's what that's, is there anything else that we can do that would help or information that we could help give you that would help your goals for the coming week? For the four people, the four people that are here. <laughs> no, that's a great, that's a great start. I, I really appreciate all of that. Okay. It sounds like when we talked about our obstacles, we also talked about what our goal is for the week. So is did anyone did anyone feel like they didn't is there anyone's goal for the coming week that that um didn't get a chance to say it or didn't feel like it was talked about like how you're going to progress your goal like carlos you're going to stick you're going to put two rest days in there and you you have a, a, an idea of what you're going to put in those rest days um scott you're going to continue did i hear you right your focus is mostly getting enough protein in that's your main focus and see what that can do for your your health goals and then linda if i heard correctly your focus is going to be you actually want to knock out a meal plan and see about how you can prepare for that meal plan for the coming week yeah that's right so 
Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that we've we've talked about what what our wins were, and we all had some, which is fantastic. We talked about our challenges, but while talking about our challenges, we also talked about how we're more than capable of overcoming those challenges, especially if we reflect on them, say today, so that tomorrow when we got it, we go to start putting our plan into action, we have already overcome in our mind what those what those potential roadblocks are. So then they're no longer roadblocks; they're just you know, they're just scenic things we're passing as we go on our journey, right? Because you already know what they are and you have time to plan for it. So I think that's a great place to stop um, with the idea that next week when we meet up again, we're going to talk about, okay, now we've executed these plans and probably some more things will come up or some questions and feel free to shoot us an email or a text so that we can answer it in real time so that you're not waiting a whole week doing something that is less efficient or less effective than maybe it could be had you had the answer. So don't hold anything back. Just ask as you, as it comes to mind, just keep them coming, let the questions flow so that we can try to, to answer questions and, and give guidance or point you in the right direction as we're going through it. Awesome. Thank you. This was really helpful. Anything, you guys. anything else, Cole? Um, I'm just putting uh, for Carlos and I, Linda, I don't know if you have it, but I'm putting my, uh, my cell phone number and my email in here if y'all have questions for me. Awesome. Otherwise, you know how to reach Kathy. Um, so feel free to feel free to reach out for anything specific um, or general. That's okay with me. Yeah, it's oftentimes this is a lonely, it's a lonely game to be having goals because a lot of times the people around us don't have these goals, right? which is why we came together as a group. So even if your accountability buddy that you found last week, if they're not responding or whatever, just know that you can always interact with Cole or I or, or anyone else in the group, but, but getting that feedback and, and sort of interacting with people helps you stay in tune. Even if it's just to say like, Hey, I did this today. Like even you could text me anytime and say, this is, I, you know, this is something that I worked on today and it worked, or this is something I did today and it didn't work just so that you're communicating, you're interacting. So it's not so that you're just doing this all alone, unless you totally are just, you know, function really well that way. But most people that I've worked with, they function better in a community of, of people trying to work towards something because change is hard. And the reality is, is that most people around us, whether it's within our family or it's our friend group or our coworkers or the people we, you know, have to study with, they have totally different trajectories with their health, right? And so we need, you know, to not live in a vacuum of just us being the only ones on our little island trying to make this big difference, right? You're not on your own island. We're here. And so any questions or feedback or, you know, wins during the week, you know, let us know. That goes for all of you who didn't show up today too. <laughs> <laughs> well thanks guys